and welcome to a new series of Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Frank Skinner and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Jeannie Yashere. <laughs> we start with a round called if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Gina, which category would you like? Entertainment news. OK, entertainment news. The answer is 50 nights. What is the question? Is it how long does it take me to successfully build an IKEA wardrobe? <laughs> is it if an MP spent one night in a hotel, how many nights would he claim for? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, how much of a start was Stephen Hawking given at this year's London Marathon? <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> How many nights per year does the Queen sneak away to do karaoke? <laughs> under, the, under the alias of Big Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many late shifts would you have to do at B&Q before you came to dismiss life as a grotesque <laughs> pantomime? <laughs> <laughs> Is it dogs often go to fetch help when their master is in trouble? How long would you have to be lying dead before your cat gave a shit? <laughs> <laughs> How long has Jackie Smith's husband been sleeping in the conservatory? <laughs> Is it... How long would it take Nick Park to film a Wallace and Gromit porno? <laughs> Is it... Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Only working at night. Yeah, 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 yeah. How long did it take Lady Gaga to perfect tucking her penis between her legs? <laughs> Is it which themed disco evenings have the most restrictive age policy? <laughs> <laughs> 50 nights. <laughs> no? Is it? <laughs> Is it how long before we get the right answer to this one? <laughs> yeah. I think I've got the right answer. No, don't do the right. I haven't done a funny one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, right? Yeah. Is it... <laughs> is it, generally speaking, what separates 51 days? <laughs> <laughs> You don't, you don't have to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the number of nights that Michael Jackson was going to play the O2 Arena? It is, of course, absolutely. Thank you very much, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> the question I was looking for was, how many nights was Michael Jackson due to perform at London's O2 Arena before his recent death? This is the news of the King of Pop, the news of the King... You have heard this, I presume, somewhere. Uh, <laughs> This is the news that the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, is dead. The 50-year-old star died suddenly following a cardiac arrest and was just weeks away from his This Is It tour in London. His death has left millions of fans in mourning. <laughs> One devastated fan said, I was at Disneyland when I heard he died. I didn't want to believe it. It was only when Mickey Mouse confirmed <laughs> it to me that I accepted it. <laughs> you know how in the future everyone will say, oh, do you remember where you were when Michael Jackson died? Almost everybody will be able to answer... I was texting a joke about Michael Jackson. <laughs> Even the doctor that was announcing that he died had a look across his face like, I've got one. <laughs> but you he touched you... millions of fans. People are going to love this. But you could just... <laughs> there was also there was a bloke on the radio, I was listening, on Five Live or something, he said, uh, brilliant, he said, I'm really glad that he didn't do those 50 nights at the O2 because I think they would have killed him. <laughs> People, people, people reacted to his death very differently, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, like, so, like, Jermaine Jackson was on the news saying that he wished that he'd died instead. Do you see that? Yeah. And, and I reacted differently. I wish that he'd died as well. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are now that he's dead 13 singles in the top 40. Mm. So the Spice Girls, they know what they've got to do. <laughs> They found him, they said that he was face down on the floor next to the bed and they didn't call an ambulance for 50 minutes because they just thought he was looking for the other glove. <laughs> <laughs> it can't have been easy, though, for them yeah. to actually work out he was ill, can it? 
because let's face it, he's been looking pale for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, but come on. I genuinely, think, I genuinely think the symptoms of a massive cardiac arrest are more than... You're looking a bit pale there, <laughs> don't <laughs> We seem to forget, we're forgetting, though, that the guy was a genius. Like, he wrote some of the best records of our generation. Thriller is still the best-selling album of all time. I think you'll find time. Glenn Miller wrote some of the best records of my generation. <laughs> <laughs> The guy Welcome was a back. genius. I mean, what black man can produce three white kids? It's amazing. <laughs> Frank, you've got a better chance of being their, their dad than Michael. <laughs> wow. Did You're you right, though, no <laughs> If that is the case, they're in real trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a choice between Michael and Frankie. Sorry, kids, a bit of a change of location for you. You're going to live with Uncle Frankie now. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, after staying with Michael Jackson? <laughs> it's all got to be up from there, hasn't it? <laughs> The weirdest thing about Michael Jackson, I didn't even know this, he was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. That's, like, the least weird thing about him. I bet, I bet when he went to the Jehovah's Witness meetings, they pretended not to be in. <laughs> Michael, turn the telly down! Although he did look like someone who wouldn't have a blood transfusion, didn't he? <laughs> well, I think people, people generally, because they loved his music so much, they were willing to forgive him what he got up to in his private life. So there's a lesson in there, isn't there? For Gary Glitter, <laughs> write better songs. <laughs> <laughs> but the memorial had a huge number of stars. You know, Stevie Wonder, Mariah Carey, Lionel Richie. Oh, yeah, and the kid from Britain's Got Talent. I love it. <laughs> hey, they gave Stevie Wonder a seat in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you've got to wait ten minutes for him to he walk doesn't... all the way from the back of the theatre. <laughs> Next up, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Come on, Stevie, we have a little day here, right? <laughs> Stevie's like, I'll be with you in a minute! Uh, <laughs> weaving his way, yeah. like, in the middle of the row. Is that, sorry, excuse me, sorry, I'm on, I'm on, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know that they said they'd had thousands of volunteers to be pallbearers at Michael Jackson's funeral? I bet they'd... Where were they when Barry White died? <laughs> One of the best stories about this, I don't know if you read this, was that Bubbles has been banned from the funeral he has, because yeah. he's too yeah. violent. That's a fantastic story, isn't it? But surely Michael Jackson's dad's going who beat him up for 20 years. <laughs> and yet a monkey who likes to throw his poo around a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't even tell him because they didn't want to upset him. He's a monkey! <laughs> As if, if he sat there going, no, no, Is he right? oh, banana, num, num, num. <laughs> <laughs> When did we start telling pets? Somebody must have made the decision, like, Michael's dead, somebody better tell the tigers. Do you reckon they'll do that with David Blunkett? If he, if he pegs it, someone better tell his dog. <laughs> He's gone, David. No! I think the, do the dog will sense the dead weight on the lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he should have left Bubbles to Diana Ross. Because it's great, he left the three <laughs> kids to three Diana kids, Ross yeah. and she didn't know. That's a... They're going to turn up and she's going to go, what is it, trick or treat? No, no, we always wear these. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's left his kids to Diana Ross. She doesn't know. He, he, it's like, he didn't We should all do it. it. Let's all yeah, put yeah. that in our... Like, it's be like Rick <laughs> rolling. <laughs> it would be great, though, if we did leave everything to Diana Ross, if everyone in the yeah. world got together, just leaving anything, you know, like a bugle or a flute, just <laughs> so that she'd be sat there going, this is ridiculous. I feel like I'm in the middle of a chain reaction. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? That's um, yeah. 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 Do you, think for, uh, do you think for parenting, if they're misbehaving, you just go, stop, in the name of love? <laughs> when I was... Actually, seriously, when I was, like... <laughs> I suppose when I was about eight or nine, I was a massive Michael Jackson fan, and I wish I'd known at the time that I was his type. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, uh, you know, you know the not... conspiracy theory at the minute? There's a conspiracy theory already that Michael Jackson faked his own death. If he faked his death, where could he go in the world that he would blend in? <laughs> Does Cornwall even have a police force? <laughs> Isn't it odd that, uh, that Michael Jackson's dancing deteriorated as he got whiter and whiter? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, the points go to Russell, Frank and Andy! <laughs> Now we play a round called Don't Stop Till You Get a Laugh. This game involves Frank, Andy, Frankie mm. and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. 
This is where we test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge who produce the funniest stuff, OK? Here we go, let's spin the wheel. First topic is parenting. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. Getting quick. <laughs> you may have seen that there was a woman gave birth recently who was 72 years old. That's not right, is it? You don't want to be a kid struggling to walk to find out your mum's in exactly the same state. <laughs> <laughs> but in this country, it's been more, hasn't it? The young people who've been giving birth, Alfie Patton, supposedly, a dad at 13 years old, and then they were saying, oh, no, he's not the dad, some people. I don't know what's going to happen to Alfie now. Maybe he's going to have to join Fathers for Justice. <laughs> hey. He's probably got a superhero costume, hasn't he? <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is history. Who wants to come in on that? Frank. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, history. I, I think it's important not to trust history. Don't take things for granted. I watched that film, The Elephant Man, recently, and it suddenly struck me, after all these years, that The Elephant Man doesn't actually look like an elephant. <laughs> it doesn't. The Elephant Man doesn't look like an elephant. If anything, he looks like fresh ginger. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously... If you're putting up posters trying to sell a freak show, you can't say, coming soon, the ginger man. <laughs> or people are going to think, OK, they're not the best-looking people in the world, but I'm not paying to see one. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can edit history now, right? They've, they've brought it... Scientists have found out which part of the brain contains your bad memories, and they have developed a drug... You must have read about this... that can actually erase bad memories. It's what Ronnie Wood's 20-year-old girlfriend calls the morning-after pill. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frank. <laughs> that leaves us with Frankie and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. Next topic is Britain's Got Talent. Frankie. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched... I actually watched this series of Britain's Got Talent, or, as I think, it should be renamed... How bored are Britain's women and homosexuals? <laughs> Susan Boyle... Susan Boyle, to me, looks like Gordon Brown playing Mrs Doubtfire. <laughs> she was on Oprah Winfrey in America and they subtitled her. And people in West Lothian, where she's from, were absolutely horrified, as many of them can't read. <laughs> She says, she says that she's never been kissed. And on that evidence alone, Scotland's alcohol problems are not as bad as first thought. <laughs> uh, OK, let's see what Russ has been left with. Let's spin the wheel. OK, the topic is human behaviour. Some things you can't help doing, do you find this? Like, if you get a cold can of Diet Coke, it's not enough for you to go, that is freezing. You have to find somebody you love and put it on their face. You can't... <laughs> you don't do that with any other food. This soup's boiling in your eyes! But <laughs> for some reason, you become a fizzy torture. All right, Mum Fanta, to the knee! <laughs> We're all fairly peculiar. Sometimes you think weird thoughts. I was in Tesco the other day, I was offered a bag for life, and I found myself going, I can't commit to that. You know? <laughs> I don't know what bags are going to be like in the future. I feel like a tool if I got a plastic one in 2024. <laughs> People go, I've got a new bag. It packs itself and speaks Spanish. Piece of shit. <laughs> what can you do? I can suffocate a child. That's all you're good for. He can speak Spanish. I can hurt your hands on long journeys. <laughs> well done, Russell. Points there go to Andy and Russell. Our next event is called Headliners. Here's a picture of Centre Court at Wimbledon. But what does RBWF stand for? Is it really boring watch football? <laughs> Regular bunch of white folk. <laughs> is it? Russ and Bus and Winner Federer. <laughs> 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 
Bossin, Bossin, <laughs> Women's <laughs> Treasure. What's that then? You what is to... that? Is that like I think that's from Scooby Doo. As Captain Caveman commentating on. Bossin, 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 Is it replace bowls with fruit? <laughs> All right, let's move towards the correct is it, answer is it if we really can. Really, both Williams's fellas. <laughs> is it simply <laughs> rich bastards watch final? <laughs> Give us a touch of that. All right, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More, more <laughs> tennis for the people. Yeah. yeah. For those, is it record-breaking Wimbledon final? It is record-breaking yeah. Wimbledon final. Thank you very much. Y'all watch this, we excited. Do you, know, about... do you know the most amazing thing about the final? Tim, Tim Henman commentating on the final? What does he know about it? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, none of us were interested. As soon as, as soon as Murray got knocked out, we weren't bothered. And it was hilarious how thick we were. We were like, come on, Andy, do it for Britain. Game, set, match, Roddick, you Scottish bastard! <laughs> Straight away. Andy Murray, I think, is, like we've got to admit, he's a brilliant British number one. Yes. We're not taking anything away from him, but let's not forget. The British number two is actually Adrian Childs. <laughs> <laughs> and the number three is just the concept of disappointment. <laughs> For many years, there wasn't a British number one. It just started at two. I mean, Did you see the other British guys that got knocked out in the first round? Some of those guys turned up with snooker cues. <laughs> I mean, you're right, Frankie, because I, in fact, had two weeks at the David Lloyd Tennis Centre, and I'm now <laughs> Britain's number six. <laughs> it's not just Britain that's bad, though. What happened to the lesbians? They used to dominate Wimbledon. <laughs> Where are they now? Yeah. Well, they really like the... miss that smell of pipe smoke in the ladies' locker room. <laughs> uh, what well, I like about Andy Murray, right, is he's, like, beyond Scottish. He's, like, almost translucent. It's like a living porridge. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the sun would strike him in a certain way and he'd cast a rainbow against the scoreboards. No wonder people couldn't beat him, they couldn't see him. It must have been like playing Predator or something. <laughs> if, you, if you watch Women, I loved it, it was really great, because the cameramen this year were proper perverts. Yeah. Every time a point was played, they're like, right, let's have a look, she will do. <laughs> Was, did you see there was one clip where this girl with massive tatty bow jangles was, was literally in, yeah, I literally saw that. In slow motion, going... <laughs> and you, and McEnroe actually said, God damn. Yeah. And it was literally the highlight. <laughs> I, I, I have to, always... I watched, I, not, not to be honest, Mike, I watched that in high def and in, in 1080, that was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, just... but they always cut to the beautiful wife or girlfriend yes. in the box. They always do that. I wish... I, now, looking back, I'd really tried at tennis and got to this level, and then I'd have gone out with the fattest <laughs> pig I could have found <laughs> and sat her up there until they said, oh, Skinner playing really well, and there's his... Oh, my God! <laughs> Looks like he's given her a few backhanders. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we've been out to see a Patty Bojangles, or what, what they call it. It's Tatty Bojangles, but the thing is... <laughs> the best you, thing about... you don't use that during love play, I hope. Uh... <laughs> I'm talking about my girlfriend. It sounds like an imaginary friend a child would have who behaves <laughs> inappropriately. <laughs> oh, dear, Mr Tatty Bojangles is here again. <laughs> I'll never be able to get to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. Who no, spilled the milk on the floor? Tatty Bojangles. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, the other great thing about the cameramen is the, some of the replays were outstanding because, for some reason, women have seemed to employ the oldest ladies they could to be line judges. So these poor women haven't got a chance of getting the way out of these 137 miles per hour serves. There was one old woman, you could literally see it just go, whack, and smack her in the face, and they replayed it. Just see this poor lady go... <laughs> <laughs> and all the dead work left, well, I've got spalding on my face, and no! <laughs> I love the screaming, you know, the screaming and the grunting. Actually, the neighbours asked me to keep it down. <laughs> in the final, they cut to a shot of Woody Allen and Soon G sitting oh, in the okay. crowd. And you could, I was trying to read his lips, and it looked like he was saying, no, no, don't buy an ice cream. That just <laughs> makes me look like a pig. Don't buy an ice cream. <laughs> cream. And will you stop calling me dad? <laughs> Everybody was interested in when the roof closed, and I thought, that's not the exciting bit. The exciting bit is when the roof opens, and the umpire's chair goes back and Thunderbird 1 takes off. <laughs> well, that was the yeah. thing, wasn't it? They said the roof would stop moments like Cliff Richard singing because it was raining. You think, that's a lot of expense to go to to stop <laughs> Cliff Richard singing. You can get a gun in Brixton for 60 quid. <laughs> what I love about Wimbledon in general, it's the only sport that has its own fruit. You know, strawberries. Imagine doing that at Millwall. Lovely game. Guava? <laughs> <laughs> What young. is the grunting about? <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to see them doing it in, like, the snooker or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no! 
Why were royal finances in the news this week? Because uh, the Queen blew all her money on a horse called Thug Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen it's is at the centre right. of an expenses scandal, isn't she? Because she's been claiming Balmoral as her main residence and claiming the council tax back on Buckingham Palace! <laughs> She's still got... Apparently, she lost six million last year, had to spend six million, but she's still got 240 million in the bank. She's not going to turn up for the Christian speech next year wearing a shell suit going, It's been a tough year. <laughs> <laughs> Philip got a job writing for the BNP. <laughs> you think Although, in fairness, they've taken her eyes, which is a bit... <laughs> you know, she, she does like... She does look like a cartoon character who's seen a sexy cartoon character <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> The Queen could print more money anyway. All she really needs is a profile shot and a photocopier. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they say the Queen spent £14,000 on a train journey from London to Liverpool. <coughs> and that's what happens if you let an old-age pensioner use the self-service ticket machine. <laughs> yeah. But it's not, in fairness, it's not the Queen. It's, um, it's the other, like, uh, Princess Beatrice. Is, yeah. uh, she's at university at Goldsmiths. And um, we're having to spend 300 grand on doing up her student digs. It's <laughs> ridiculous. What kind of note is she going to leave on her fridge? Somebody had the quail's eggs. That's... <laughs> yeah. well, she, she would she's normally have to spend... 300 grand getting her flat done up so she can go and study the history of ideas. I've got an idea for you, Beatrice. Get your fat ass down to B&Q. <laughs> They're always going on about whether the royal family is actually, actually value for money. But at the end of the day, we do get a lot of tourists coming in. If you just go to the Buckingham Palace on any day, you see the number of tourists gawking at it. I mean, I don't think you can still get the same numbers if they turfed out the royal family and turned it into a giant little. Do we, we, need a royal, we need a royal family to attract American tourists. Have you seen those people? You could attract them with a balloon on a stick. <laughs> I don't know about turning it into a big Lidl, but I think people would come from <laughs> far and wide if the Queen was forced to work at Lidl. Oh, you can imagine going up to the Queen going, yeah, what, four packets of already broken biscuits, yeah? <laughs> they said Do people still actually buy <laughs> already broken biscuits? Dara's hardly going to know the answer, is he? <laughs> Let's be honest, the new, the new slim Dara doesn't know anything about biscuits. biscuits. Look at I him. didn't even recognise yeah. the word biscuits. He looks like a Russian look bodyguard. No actual... Uh, oh, you thing. look good. Don't you? I think we should have started the show with you just in front of the camera, just doing a gun show like that. <laughs> you like that, nation? They call me Vladimir. <laughs> He looks like a Russian bodyguard, did not he? I don't, I don't know if you realise yeah. if you realise the story behind this, but Dara's lost weight because he's been on the Irish version of I'm a Celebrity, which is set during the potato famine. <laughs> 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 yeah. How much weight have you lost, actually? Who, me? <laughs> Since I've been not, on air about two seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm not Colleen Nolan. I, this isn't <laughs> loose women. I'm not discussing <laughs> weight loss. <after> the show. <laughs> you know? At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie, Hugh and Gina. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes. We'd like to see this for everyone, so if you can all make your way over to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see and the performers come in with their suggestions. <clears throat> right, here we go. The first subject is... Things you wouldn't hear from a weather forecaster. The Met Office have issued a weather warning. They've told the weather not to do that again or there'll be trouble. <laughs> Temperatures could rise to 31 degrees. Shit, I've left my baby in the car! <laughs> <laughs> A hurricane tonight will be caused by low pressure and God's hatred of homosexuality. <laughs> A huge depression over Scotland and now the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a warning to hay fever sufferers. Don't come sneezing near me or I'll rip your face off. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the summary. Monday shite, Tuesday shite, Wednesday shite, Thursday bollocks. <laughs> the humidity's rising. The barometer's going low. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time, just about half past ten, <laughs> it's going to start raining men. <laughs> Thank you.
The outlook's bright for the weekend. I've got three grams of coke in my pocket and my wife's on holiday. <laughs> Well, let's go to Carol on the roof of Television Centre. She's not meant to be there. She's just a bit depressed. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the country is going to stay hot and wet for quite some time because that's where my girlfriend lives. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, it's going to be between 17 and 21, but Berlusconi won't date older than that. <laughs> It was raining cats and dogs last night. I should know. I was throwing them off my roof. <laughs> what are you watching me for? Look out the fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be cloudier tonight. I love those German birds. <laughs> <laughs> what do you care what the weather's going to be like? You look shit in all your clothes. <laughs> The next topic is deleted lines from Star Trek. Kirk to Enterprise. OK, how about if I stand over here? <laughs> Scotty, that's the most convincing your accent has ever been. <laughs> Captain, I can see an alien ship approaching. It's not showing up on the radar. It's a circular vessel, some sort of lettering and number... Oh, no, sorry, it's my, it's my tax disc. <laughs> I have no emotion. My mother was a Vulcan. My father was Gordon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, which one of you ate my Scotch egg? <laughs> <laughs> This is the Federation of Gay Planets. Open your docking bay and prepare to be boarded. <laughs> Tell you what, Spock, your towel is a lot softer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's log. Just seen some aliens. OMG, WTF, LOL, smiley face. <laughs> Who are these terrifying aliens? You can't call them that anymore, Captain. <laughs> it's a Huru and Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the SS Enterprise, Mr. Eccleston. <laughs> now, which one of you put your red top in the washing with all the yellow ones? <laughs> uh, there's going to be some changes around here. They call me Captain Tatty Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Captain Picard? What's wrong? I'm a serious Shakespearean actor, <laughs> and I'm talking to the ambassador of the fucking worm people! <laughs> At the end of that round, the boys go to Russell, Frank and Andy! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Frank Skinner and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Jeannie Ashery. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. More comedy to come here on BBC Two and some serious news about Toast with that Mitchell and Webb look next tonight, and then paying homage to Hitchcock's Psychoville's take on the classic film Rope at 10.